¿Se imaginan rejuvenecer, ir para atrás en el tiempo, de repente aparentar más joven, sentirte más sano, tener la piel más tersa, que no te fatigas, tener más lucidez mental? En fin, los músculos más fuertes, pues todo esto es lo que ha conseguido la protagonista de hoy. Ella dice que ha rejuvenecido 20 años. Yo lo que les puedo asegurar es que tiene 51 y viéndola en persona aparenta 30 justos. No sé cómo va a dar en cámara. Ahora nos tiene que contar bien en qué ha consistido ese tratamiento que se lo realizó por primera vez en 2016 y lo hizo con su propia compañía. Se fue a Colombia, ella es americana, no podía por la legislación americana, así que saltándose las leyes se marchó a Colombia y comenzó su tratamiento. Vamos a hablar con ella, ella es Liz Harris y va a ser un auténtico placer aquí ahora en El Foco. No se lo pierdan porque va a merecer la pena. que les decía yo que vamos a hablar con Liz Paris y aquí la tengo. Hi Paris. Hi. <laughs> Mrs. <to> Paris. <laughs> It's a pleasure to be here with you. No sé si podéis apreciar, como decía, su edad, pero de verdad que yo estoy impactada. Es que me sorprende porque aparenta 30 años. Bueno, ella resulta que tiene un hijo que padece diabetes 1 y eso es un problema que la preocupó muchísimo. Estuviste muy preocupada, Liz, con, con la enfermedad de tu hijo y decidiste someterte a una terapia para ver qué ocurría contigo y así, en base a las investigaciones que había hecho precisamente una investigadora española, María Blasco, pues aplicarlo en ti para ver si podías notar algo en tu cuerpo y así también ayudar a la gente que padece diabetes 1. ¿Qué notas realmente en tu cuerpo, además de verte más joven, es obvio que estás más joven, pero ¿qué notas por dentro? So, you know, the feeling healthy is the lack of feeling bad. So, when you're healthier, you just, you know, you're just getting back to life. I'm more energetic, I have less body pains. So, it's really hard to explain what health feels like. Um, I think that this is going to be one of the challenges of the future. Typically in healthcare we treat disease. So you have a disease and you have a recovery period and for the most part you never really recover in today's sick care system. But with gene therapy, you know, we're creating cells that are you more youthful, healthier, and so health just it feels like the absence of illness. So it, it's a nice feeling. I'm just back. I'm more energetic. I'm doing more things. I'm playing soccer again and um, climbing up on cabinets and painting ceilings and things that I didn't realize that I stopped doing. El tratamiento al que tú te has sometido, que lo hiciste en 2016, lo que hace es mejorar la telomerasa, alarga los telomeros, con lo cual reduce las posibilidades de envejecimiento, de padecer cáncer. También te has sometido con ese tratamiento a fortalecer los músculos y el cerebro, a tener más agilidad y a ralentizar cualquier tipo de deterioro cognitivo. ¿Tú te notas todo eso? Sí, yeah, so when, so again, um, being healthy is kind of the lack of, of the bad things you feel, but when you do, so I did several gene therapies. One of them was called uh, fullestatin, and it increases your muscle mass, and you can definitely feel that. Um, you can feel it in your everyday activity and you can feel it, you know, just... Do you know what? A guy told me, a man, that uh, he's impressed with your muscles, that you look like a boxer man. <laughs> yeah. It's true? Yeah. I, I do have uh, pretty strong muscles and if I work out they get pretty big, um, but it's still within, I think, a, a reasonable amount. And um, it's, But it's really important for an aging population because yeah. aging population gets frail, uh, they have falls, and so really we have to help people live uh, better longer. And folostatin is one of the gene therapies that can help them do that. Another gene that I took was called Clotho, and it is a cognitive enhancer, and it's yeah. a geroprotector for your body. And I did perform better on mental tests. My scores were better after the therapy, and we'll see if that continues. ¿Qué tienes que decirle a la comunidad científica? Porque algunos te han criticado seriamente porque tú has hecho el tratamiento saltándote los protocolos que hay a nivel internacional. De hecho, te fuiste de Estados Unidos a Colombia precisamente porque no podías hacerlo según la regulación estadounidense. ¿Qué les tienes que decir? Dicen que no es correcto así hacerlo solamente con un paciente. Tú has sido la paciente cero. Well, I mean, I would criticize them for not moving faster to human use. A uh, hundred thousand people die today of aging. Forty-one million people have died every year since telomerase reverse transcriptase was found. And 
And um, I am one woman who decided that I should open up access of this therapy to the world. So uh, the risk aversion is, is killing people. Um, it's quite murderous uh, to not move technology forward to the people who actually need it. My company is doing that. And you know we will make sure that we have data on a lot of people over the next few years. Tú has escrito de hecho artículos científicos ya y están publicados en revistas científicas. Yeah, absolutely. We've published three articles. Our last one is a new gene therapy delivery method in which we hope that we will help the whole industry uh, deliver better precision medicine through gene therapy. So our new delivery method can deliver more genes at one time uh, because that's what we're going to need with aging and complex disease. So we're really excited about that. Yeah, we, we have continued to publish. We work with the scientific community and vastly a lot of the scientific community no longer actually criticizes us anymore. They understand that innovation always comes from someone who's going to push it forward. But if there's anyone still out there criticizing, you know, they really need to take a close look at bioethics. Too many people are dying without access to these new technologies. Esa es una gran verdad. ¿Cuánto tiempo necesitaste tú para rejuvenecer. Tú te notaste físicamente que rejuvenecías en cuanto, porque el tratamiento lo hiciste en 2016, eso por un lado, y por otro, si has continuado haciéndote tratamientos que te han rejuvenecido más o que te han ido manteniendo en ese rejuvenecimiento inicial que hiciste. So the first gene therapy I took in 2015 and that was uh, the beginning and we started to uh, log my data and see what was happening with me and then I took the therapies again and added two other genes in 2020 so I've taken four gene therapies altogether. Una de ellas, de hecho te la fuiste a hacer a aguas internacionales porque volvías a tener el mismo problema o te ibas a Colombia o te tenías que ir a un sitio donde no hubiera un problema con la legislación. ¿Cuánto tiempo duró esa terapia? Well, gene therapies are sort of designed to be a one-time treatment for a lifetime, but what we're interested in is dosage. What is the dosage that people need? With some gene therapies, we have the caveat of needing to get them in most of the cells of the body. For those type of gene therapies, they'll probably need to be taken every five years to layer them slowly into your system because we can't target every cell in your body with one therapy. Uh, for a gene therapy like fullostatin for your muscles, I mean, it could last a lifetime or as short as five years, and this is kind of the new territory of what we're finding out. ¿Tú crees que estos tratamientos se podrán implementar en la población en general relativamente pronto? ¿Cuánto calculas tú para que pueda tener acceso la gente? So yeah, I think the therapies will eventually be available for everyone for very cheap or governments will pay for them because right now the global cost of aging, if we, if we could just delay aging by one year due to a new paper that came out from David Sinclair's lab, we could send, save 38 trillion dollars in one year by just delaying aging one year. So you can imagine that curing aging would save billions of dollars, trillions of dollars uh, bi-yearly, and the governments would want everyone to have access to that technology. Anyone who wants access should get access. Um, initially, they're very expensive technologies. You know, it's new, nascent technology. It costs a lot to build a gene therapy for one person, but gene, building a gene therapy for a thousand people becomes much cheaper, and for a million people, even cheaper than that. So um, I think that this will be democratized uh, technology that will get to everyone, but it will take a long time. So I recently came out with a paper uh, called Best Choice Medicine. It's about an uh, expedited route for terminally ill people that would help everyone get access to these technologies sooner. So I think that this now becomes a real political um, debate. We need to help uh, policymakers actually enact plans so that people can get access to the technology they need right now. A hundred thousand people will die today. They should get access to this technology if they want to. Es que es cierto que mucha gente muere por la edad, porque el cuerpo se va deteriorando, sufres numerosos achaques y, y la gente fallece. Entonces, cuando se pueda controlar eso, van a ahorrar mucho en sanidad. Así que es cierto que tiene todo el sentido que lo hagan accesible. Pero tú si tuvieras que poner un plazo, ¿estás manteniendo relaciones, eh, hablando conversaciones con, con el gobierno americano para esto precisamente? Eso por un lado. Y por otro, si tuvieras que poner un plazo, en caso de que estés teniendo conversaciones, ¿de cuánto crees que estamos hablando? 
So we have just released our paper in which to start a conversation with the U.S. government. Uh, right now, by regular regulatory standards, you wouldn't see this treatment available for 20 years. And it would be for one indication, and it would have to be something that the U.S. FDA considered a disease. So if you didn't have that condition, you still couldn't get access to it, even if it treated all-cause mortality, meaning all of aging. So that's a problem, and so that's why we will work with the regulatory routes, but we also want an expedited route. We'd like to have you know people having access to the medicine through medical tourism, and we'd like to push governments towards allowing that sort of ease of access in their own countries so that the data can be collected ethically and pushed towards clinical trials. Tú eres una valiente porque, de hecho, un premio Nobel de medicina te dijo ¿pero qué estás haciendo? O sea, vas a tener cáncer. ¿No te asustó esto un poco? Luego, por otro lado, hasta la fecha, y esperemos que siga siendo no, no has tenido ningún problema. Well, I think that he is a very smart man, but that he studied the cancer side of telomerase when actually telomerase reverse transcriptase will probably protect people against cancer. It probably is the, the biggest protection is to keep telomeres long and your genomic um, chromosomes stable. And that's what long telomeres do. Short telomeres put you at risk of cancer. So there was a little bit of a divergence in understanding between cancer and longevity. If you look at the cancer papers, in 80% of cancers, telomerase is turned on, but so are almost every other gene in your genome. Now, when you look at longevity, when you add telomerase to cells, animals don't get increased risk of cancer. They often get decreased risk of can cancer. Human cells don't either. So we can assume it can't be proven 100% until hundreds of thousands of people have the therapy, but I assume that it will actually protect against cancer. Bueno, todo esto está muy bien, pero supongo que los que nos están viendo, algunos está preguntando, oye, si yo me quiero hacer el tratamiento con Liz en su compañía, ¿podría hacerlo? Yéndome a aguas internacionales, yéndome a Colombia, donde quiera que sea, ¿podría alguien pagando el importe que valga y yendo donde le indiquéis tratarse con tu compañía? So right now we're raising money for a clinical trial for dementia. Uh, in the past we worked with a medical tourism company who did a study. We want to see if we can reproduce it with an ethics board study, so a proper trial in Mexico of 10 people. So we're actually um, taking donations now to do that dementia study and get more people access to the therapies. Y con todo lo que estáis investigando también y con los avances que están realizando grandes investigadores en este terreno, ¿cómo ves que se puede aplicar también para la diabetes de tu hijo? Well, number one, um, diabetes is also a complex disorder. The more that we learn about gene therapy and the most ethical case use, the biggest medical unmet need, aging, the more we learn about curing diseases like his. Um, another thing, um, there are new medical interventions that are coming through stem cells that are going to help diabetic children uh, a lot before there's a genetic cure. And the last thing I want for my son is for him to be cured of one disease, to live 10 or 20 years and just start dying of another one. I think that it's an imperative that we don't leave our children with the same diseases that we die from. You know, that's, that's science moving forward. That's what we have always done with science until recently when we got risk averse and we got more money oriented than cure oriented. And you know, this is the opportunity to make a better future and actually be part of it and live to see that future. Volviendo a lo que nos tiene a todos impactados, que es el rejuvenecimiento y el decir, oye, es que me gustaría rejuvenecer. Y tú estás diciendo, bueno, Ahora mismo se podría hacer con determinadas clínicas, como lo has hecho tú en Colombia, se van a hacer pruebas también en México. ¿Eso se puede hacer ya, ya, ya? O sea, ahora mismo uno dice, quiero hacerlo, yo te digo, quiero ir y puedo ir a México a tratarme. So there are medical tourism companies that um, already are doing these type of treatments and we just ask them if we can assess your data. So if you do it, yeah, tell them that... I'm gonna be younger. Us, yeah, tell them to allow us to assess your data. <laughs> 
and I, you would have to talk to them about the cost and um, you would have to talk to a medical doctor to see if you qualified. So um, that is, you know, I don't have the ability to, I don't know that. Yeah, you are not the one that can manage, yeah? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but how long can it take to be there with the treatment? To get a gene therapy? Um, I believe it just takes a couple of weeks. You travel to a location, you take an immune suppressant, you take the gene therapy, you stay several days uh, and get uh, checkups with your doctor and nurses to make sure that you're ready to go home and then you head back home. Two that's, weeks? Yeah, that's how I understand it. Oh that's my God. That's how it was for me. Okay, pues, thank you so much, yeah. Liz. Pero ya lo habéis oído, o sea, en dos semanas podemos rejuvenecer, ahí es nada. La verdad es que yo estoy impresionada contigo, Liz, con tu juventud. Y no sé ustedes qué piensan, pero realmente es increíble que exista un tratamiento como este y que podamos ver a Liz como la estamos viendo. Me despido, hasta la semana que viene en El Foco con otra entrevista muy interesante. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to oh, be here with you. Thank you. And, you know, demand your access to medicine. Uh, that makes all the difference. You shouldn't have to leave your country to take something if you want to. It's your body. It should be your right. Cierto, es nuestro cuerpo y deberíamos ser nosotros los que decidiéramos acerca de los tratamientos a los que queremos someternos o no. Aquí hay un gran debate de la comunidad científica que quieren estar seguros y que todo se pruebe bien antes de que podamos implementarlo en nuestro cuerpo. Pero lo que dice Liz tiene una parte de razón. Así que ahí les dejo el debate y me despido hasta la semana que viene. Muchas gracias.